Hi students, welcome to ISE. So this is your Vijay sir. ISE has started SSC CGL oriented handout bits explanation. So in this particular session related to an important topic that is the classification of the living world. We shall see some important previous come expected bits right so without wasting our time straight away we can start the session so here comes your first question the kingdom protista is primarily made up of organisms that are eukaryotic and multicellular prokaryotic and multicellular prokaryotic and single celled eukaryotic and single celled so here when we come to the protista so what exactly the meaning of the word this protista so this term protista was coined by a scientist called Ernest Haeckel in the year 1866 so in the year 1866 a scientist called Ernest Haeckel has coined the term protista in fact uh, this is uh, one of the kingdoms one of the kingdoms uh, under which certain living organisms are placed so pratyek inchi konni living organisms whatever the organisms that are showing the characters of both plants and animals right so we know that uh, living organisms are broadly divided into plants and animals right so here the organisms that shows the characters of both plants and animals are placed in a separate kingdom by Ernest Haeckel in the year 1866 so that kingdom only called as what the protista okay protista so this protista mainly includes organisms that possess the characters of plants as well as animals right now here the one more point to be remembered depending on the presence of presence of membrane around the nucleus depending on the presence of nuclear membrane around the nucleus okay nuclear membrane so this is a animal cell right so at the center the nuclear material is there and it is covered by a membrane so that is called nuclear membrane right and this is nucleoplasm this is a cytoplasm so around the cell the plasma membrane is present but when we come to the plant cell the same situation happened even in the plant cell also so this is a plant cell where at the center the nuclear material is there covered by a membrane now if you take uh, this is uh, the bacterial cell okay it is bacterium now the genetic material of the nuclear material is present at the center and this is cytoplasm and here in the middle uh, nucleoplasm like this everything organized here now if you can observe these three pictures uh, here in which diagram or in which uh, organism the nucleus is prominently seen out our nucleus is uh, demarked or separated by other cellular materials so no doubt uh, the plant cell and animal cell okay so whereas when we come to the when we, when we come to the bacterium so in the bacteria okay the genetic material that is a nuclear component as well as the remaining cellular components are almost mixed so that is because around the nucleus around the nucleus the, what is not there nuclear membrane is not there okay so if nuclear membrane is present around the nucleus such organisms are said to be eukaryotes what are they called eukaryotes you means uh, true carry on means uh, nucleus simple meaning so you means uh, true carry on means uh, nucleus so you carry the organisms which have a true nucleus are said to be eukaryotes right so then 
what about this these are said to be prokaryotes what are they called prokaryotes so what is meant by prokaryotes pro means false karyon means nucleus so these does not have okay these does not have a distinct nucleus a distinct nucleus means around the nucleus nuclear membrane is absent okay such organisms are said to be what the prokaryotes right now eukaryotes prokaryotes now here when we come to the protista under protista all unicellular organisms means which are made up of a single cell right and all eukaryotes are placed okay all eukaryotes and unicellular organisms are placed that exhibit the characters of plants and animals right so that is the fundamental key point that you need to remember that always under protista unicellular eukaryotic organisms are placed but remember they exhibit the characters of both plants as well as animals for that you can take the euglena one example okay then chlamydomonas chlamydomonas so all these come under this uh, protista right so that's why here if we come to the options first one eukaryotic and multicellular prokaryotic and multicellular so here prokaryotic means it's a bacteria but eukaryotic multicellular given so that's why it should not be considered then the third option prokaryotic and single cell prokaryote only not at all considered okay so that's why b and c has to be eliminated now select answer from a and d so these are eukaryotic no doubt and a single cell right so that's why answer for the question is option d clear so here total accepted kingdoms under the classification is five kingdoms the first one monera which includes bacteria okay in the year 1969 this five kingdom classification was proposed by r h vitakar in india also will follow this pi kingdom classification right now here the first kingdom is monera second kingdom is protista and third kingdom is fungi and fourth kingdom is plantae fifth kingdom is animalia right all multicellular animals in animalia all multicellular plants in plantae and all non chlorophyllous non photosynthetic okay saprophytic organisms nothing but uh, which feeds on dead organisms are placed under the fungi right and uh, the unicellular eukaryotic organisms that exhibit both plants and animals characters are placed under the protista and the bacteria are placed under monera like this uh, in the year 1969 okay so this particular uh, heckel classification so according to heckel there are three kingdoms only so one is uh, plantae another one is animalia and protista now this three kingdom classification which was proposed by ernest heckel in the 1866 got extended in 1969 and proposed the five kingdom classification which is accepted in india also that is r r h vitakar the five kingdom classification okay so this is the important information related to this particular classification and remember these are the basic concepts related to the classification of the living world okay so right now answer for the first question is option d next one bacteria are considered more as plants than animals because of the presence of right so small nucleus plasma membrane cell wall spore formation so when we take um, explanation for this particular question so here if we take a bacteria so this bacteria is a prokaryotic organism it does not contain the nuclear membrane around the nucleus okay but it has got a cell wall okay so presence of cell wall presence of cell wall is the characteristic feature of a, is the characteristic feature of a, a plant cell so in all plant cells around the cell what is there the cell wall is present okay now in under the cell uh, underneath the cell wall okay 
or beneath the cell wall so you can have what is we are calling as a, the outermost membrane of the living cell which is called plasma membrane is present okay so here in the bacteria also we can see the plasma membrane here so in such a way the organization is there in plant cell and animal cell but the common feature what you find here is a cell wall is present okay so it has got nucleus it also has nucleus even though nuclear membrane is not there but nucleus is there here also nucleus with a definite membrane is present okay but here the another important key point is both have cell walls no doubt about that but the cell wall of plant cell the cell wall of plant cell is made up of cellulose okay the cell wall of plant cell is made up of cellulose whereas the cell wall of bacteria is made up of mucopeptide mucopeptide which is also called murin murin which is also called muramic acid muramic muramic acid okay so mucopeptide murin or muramic acid so three terms are same right so it's a non cellulosic substance which is there in the bacterial cell wall it is called mucopeptide or murin or muramic acid right so this material is there in the cell wall of bacteria but the cell wall of plant cell is made up of basically with the cellulose when a plant is developed the cellulose is replaced by another important material called lignin okay so remember here a very very important general general awareness bit so presence of lignin presence of lignin indicates uh, it's a dead cell okay so lignin makes a plant cell as a dead cell right then one more key point here animal cell animal cell how it becomes a dead cell so another important protein called keratin so a protein called a keratin okay so keratin makes a animal cell as a dead cell so remember keratin is a protein whereas lignin is under cellulose are polysaccharides nothing but the carbohydrates right so this is a somewhat additional information for you so the cell wall of bacteria made up of mucopeptide or murin or muramic acid and in the plant cell primary cell wall is with cellulose and secondary cell wall is with the lignin that makes a plant cell a dead cell so here the question is asked so bacteria are considered more as plants than animals because of the presence of what so in both the plant cell and animal cell even the bacteria plasma membrane is common so bacteria reproduces by the formation of spores so formation of spores is called sporulation formation of spores is called sporulation okay formation of spores is called sporulation right then nucleus is present common but what makes uh, to think bacteria is a plant cell means uh, a cell wall but remember the bacteria is not at all considered as a plant cell but it may be it, since uh, it shows similar characters so we may think but actually bacteria is different from uh, plants right so now answer for the question is uh, cell wall option c is the correct answer so the next one what is the common name of uh, panthera tigris panthera tigris so this uh, panthera tigris uh, the name of uh, as itself gives uh, the species name tigris uh, tigris is nothing but a tiger so option b is the right answer for this question but remember naming an organism with two words so just if you observe here panthera is one name tigris is another name so here the panthera is called genus name okay and the tigris is nothing but species name okay so panthera is a genus species is a 
sorry tigris is a species name so remember species the term species is the fundamental unit of classification it is the fundamental unit which is the fundamental unit of classification right unit of uh, classification is nothing but uh, the species then which is the biggest unit of classification the biggest unit of classification is kingdom what is it called kingdom that is the biggest unit okay the fundamental unit of classification the basic unit of classification which is the main important thing in order to divide the organisms means uh, the species only okay so remember the term species has coined by a scientist called john ray a scientist called uh, john ray and uh, what is meant by a species means uh, a group of organisms a group of uh, organisms that resemble each other that resemble each other or that have got uh, similar characters and in and, in, and can interbreed freely so they can take part in the process called reproduction without any problem so that's what uh, the meaning of the word species means uh, all mosquitoes are one species pigs are one species humans are one species rose plants are one species mango plants are one species like this uh, a group of organisms which resemble or which have similar characters and can interbreed freely or can take part in the reproduction process uh, freely without any problems is nothing but a uh, species uh, and it is the fundamental unit okay now naming an organism with two words with two words is called binomial system so what is it called the binomial system so this binomial system of binomial system of nomenclature okay so binomial system of nomenclature was introduced by a scientist called Carolus Linnaeus. Carolus Linnaeus. Okay. So, he is popularly called Linnaeus. And this is the man who is behind the introduction of this binomial system of nomenclature. Okay. Right. So, the answer is option B. Now, when we take the remaining options here. Okay. So, when we come to the cat. So, this is the scientific name of cat is Felis Catus. The scientific name is Felis catus. Here the genus is Felis catus is a species. Then if we come to the lion, it is called Panthera leo. Panthera leo. Here Panthera is a genus, leo is a species. And when we come to the dog, it is called Canis lupus. Canis lupus is the scientific name of the dog. Okay. So now, in such a way, we can take the scientific names. So that's why option B is the right answer. And we know that the tiger is our national animal. Right. That's about the explanation regarding this. Next question. Which of the following class of animals has a coelomic cavity filled with blood? Okay. A. Nematoda, B. Anilida, C. Arthropoda, D. Mollusca. So, this is another type of questioning which can be asked from this particular topic called the classification of the living world. So, here you must know what is the meaning of the word coelom first. Okay. So, what is meant by coelom? A coelom is nothing but, coelom is nothing but the space present between. Okay. The space present between space present between the internal organs internal organs and the body wall so between the body wall and internal organs we have got the space that particular space is called the stilo so for your simple understanding so whenever whether you have seen or not i don't know but uh, while you are uh, when you observe while uh, this uh, slaughtering is going on the sheep or goat uh, so first they remove the skin so when they remove the skin you could not find any organs right 
after that a muzzle layer will be there surrounding that so once that muzzle layer is removed then you can find a number of internal organs which are located inside so that means this particular layer okay which is surrounding around the internal organs separated from the external skin okay so that space which resides or which present between the internal organs and the body wall or the skin can be called as what the coelom okay if coelom is present those animals are called coelomates okay so coelomates so when we take different phylums of animal kingdom so we have got broadly animals into two categories invertebrates and vertebrates based on the presence of vertebral column so invertebrates does not have vertebral column vertebrates have got a vertebral column that means these invertebrates are called non chordates and these vertebrates are called chordates right so in such a way all the animals are divided into non chordates and chordates now in non chordates there are various phyla okay so protozoa porifera cilentarata platyhelminthes nematoda anilida arthropoda mollusca echinodermata hemichordata right so among all these phyla from from anilida onwards okay so that means so protozoa porifera cilentarata platyhelminthes nematoda by leaving these four five phyla then after that from sixth phyla onwards all the animals comes under the coelomates means what is present the coelom is present okay now here which of the following class of animals has coelomic cavity filled with blood okay so that is the question asked so in nematoda coelom is not present but here remember nematoda phylum contains pseudo coelom what is meant by pseudo coelom means the coelom it looks like coelom but it is not a coelom okay that is called pseudo coelom so pseudo coelom is present in the nematoda right and uh, uh, before that platyhelminthes cilentarata porifera protozoa those does not contain coelom at all so that's why we need not to consider this option then here when we come to the option c arthropoda so this arthropoda is also comes under the category called a coelomates okay so which contains the coelom are said to be what coelomates but in arthropoda in arthropoda white color blood is there okay so that means this blood does not contain rbc so without rbc without rbc this particular white color blood is there which we are calling as hemolymph so the white color blood present in all insects as well as the phylum mollusca okay so in mollusca as well as in the arthropods okay hemolymph is there so it does not have rbc because of the absence of rbc it will not take part in the breathing process or transportation of oxygen okay so that's why we are not going to consider this particular fluid which we are as a blood right so that's why answer is option b anilida okay so in anilida the blood is red in color okay the blood is red in color because it contains rbc as well as hemoglobin okay so hemoglobin is also present but remember in a so now if you take one of the best example for anilida is earthworm so here this earthworm remember related to earthworm very very important points it does not have rbc so in earthworm rbc are completely absent so remember here in the phylum anilida rbc and hemoglobin is okay but the earthworm that belongs to the phylum anilida does not contain rbc even though rbc is not there hemoglobin hb is dissolved in plasma so because of the presence of hemoglobin dissolved in plasma the color of the blood in earthworm is red okay so no rbc and hemoglobin is dissolved in plasma 
example earthworm then for the first time in the entire animal kingdom okay for the first time remember this important general awareness bit also for the first time heart blood blood vessels these three parts which are nothing but the parts of the circulatory system are developed for the first time in the phylum annelida and the animal example is earthworm okay right that's about this so now let us move on to the next question which of the following is used as the an, an ornamental plant so option a silotum option b lycopodium option c selaginella option d teris so when we come to these uh, almost all can be used as uh, the what we are calling as the ornamental plants but among them the most commonly used most commonly used ornamental plant and widely used orn ornamental plant is nothing but the selaginella okay so that's why answer is option c so remember the size silo silotum and lycopodium teris then selaginella all can be used as ornamental right no doubt about that but among them the widely used is selaginella right that's about to explanation regarding this next question which of the following bears naked seeds naked seeds so naked means here nothing but around the seeds no covering if around the seeds no coat or no covering is there then we can call it as a naked seed right now among the following we are given the options angiosperms gymnosperms bryophytes pteridophytes so remember here bryophyta and pteridophyta okay the bryophyta and pteridophyta both both are non flowering plants both are what non flowering plants okay so both are non flowering plants that means they do not have flowers at all since they don't have flowers so definitely these bryophyta pteridophyta no question of having what a seed right so that's why c is b is eliminated okay now when we come to angiosperms and gymnosperms here gymno means gymno means naked sperma means seed angio means covered or closed sperma means seed so here in angiosperms okay seeds are covered or closed they are present inside the fruit but here in gymnosperms naked seeds are present naked seeds are present right so remember this angiosperms and gymnosperms both comes under flowering plants okay so remember one more point also here the flowering plants are also called phenerogams so what are they called phenerogams whereas the non flowering plants are called cryptogams cryptogams right so that's about the uh, important points related to these particular uh, four options so, so now option b is the right answer for this question okay right next one which of the following characteristics uh, does not belong to flowering plants which of the following characteristics uh, does not belong to flowering plants so here the seeds are naked yes there are present uh, certain seeds in some plants uh, naked seeds are there so that is also a character next uh, conducting tissues uh, is well developed so what are the conducting tissues uh, the conducting tissues are called vascular tissues vascular tissues okay so these vascular tissues like uh, xylem and phloem okay they are present in uh, almost uh, all flowering plants uh, right so that's why this is also considered option uh, and this is also okay then if we come to the option c shows nodes and internodes so what is meant by a node presence of node is the characteristic feature of a stem so node means the place where the leaf get originated okay so the place where leaf originates is called what node so the gap or the space between two nodes are between 
the successive nodes is called what inter node inter node okay so between the two nodes the gap is called inter node and remember presence of node and inter nodes the characteristic features of the stem right so here that is also seen in the but does not belong to flowering plants okay shows uh, nodes and next shows the presence of root so roots are present in uh, flowering plants so then when we take uh, among these okay so four options seem to be related to the question but in this uh, we may, we must eliminate one of the character which cannot be found in the uh, okay which does not belong to the flowering plants right so the flowering plant means all flowering plants does not contain naked seeds only certain flowering plants have got naked seeds okay but in the remaining all conducting tissues nodes and internodes the presence of root system these three characters will be seen in all flowering plants okay but whereas in the gymnosperms only we can find naked seeds but whereas in angiosperms definitely no naked seeds so that's why which of the following characteristic does not belong to flowering plants means we have to take option a as the right answer okay so because uh, if 100 plants are there means only 50 plants have naked seeds but the remaining 50 contains closed seeds so that's why we need to consider that particular first option or statement as the raw does not belong to the flowering plant so that will be the answer okay option a next which one of the following statements about classification of plants is correct phallophytes have well differentiated body design phenaria is a fungi all pteridophytes are phenerogams vascular system is not found among bryophytes so which one of the following statements about classification of plants is correct okay now here Phallophytes have well differentiated body design. First of all, what is meant by well differentiated body design? Generally, when we take a plant, so when we take a plant, so it should contain the roots as well as the shoot, which contains the branches, then it will have the leaves. That means root to stem leaves are the important characteristic features of the plant. But this differentiation okay differentiation in the sense the division of these parts root to stem leaves that a division is not there in phallophyta okay so because of the division is not there the scientists have named such group of plants as what phallophyta phallus means undifferentiated phyta means plant okay so but here given phallophytes have well differentiated body so this is a the wrong statement next phenaria is a fungi no phenaria is a bryophyte okay so bryophyte we are calling as mass plants and term bryophytes okay right okay so that's why this is also the wrong statement next all pteridophytes are phenerogams so what are phenerogams nothing but flowering plants but here but here the pteridophyte is not a flowering plant it is a crypto cryptogam so that's why option c is also not correct statement then when we come to the vascular system is not found among bryophytes so the vascular system means uh, i already mentioned that is xylem and phloem okay so the xylem is uh, transporting water and minerals uh, the phloem transports uh, food materials right now xylem and phloem are together called the vascular tissues right so these vascular tissues are first seen in uh, pteridophyta first seen in uh, pteridophyta okay so for this uh, clear, clear understanding of this uh, you take plant classification so plant classification non-flowering plants okay non-flowering plants so the flowering plants the non-flowering plants are phallophyta bryophyta and pteridophyta the flowering plants gymnosperms and geosperms 
right now here the pteridophyta onwards vascular tissues are there pteridophyta gymnosperms and geosperms but up to bryophyta no vascular tissue so even statement is correct so that will be the answer for the question okay now related to this pteridophyta bryophyta also so bryophytes are called bryophytes are called the amphibians of the plant kingdom bryophytes are called amphibians why because they can live in the moist places as well as in the normal dry lands okay so that's why it is called the that means in the water as well as on the land so bryophytes are called the amphibians of the plant kingdom okay then these pteridophytes are called reptiles of the plant kingdom reptiles of the plant kingdom okay so then which are called uh, ferns so which are called ferns means uh, the pteridophytes right so related to these two uh, groups then pteridophyte related another important point or another important bit also what is that which are the first vascular cryptogams first vascular non-flowering plants are also called are also nothing but the pteridophytes okay right these are the some of the important points and expected bits related to this particular question let us move on to the next one the red color of the red sea is due to the presence of moss bacteria algae fungi so when we come to this particular question here moss plants means bryophytes bacteria it's not at all a plant and if you come to the fungi fungi is a non-chlorophyllous non-photosynthetic plant. okay now the red color of the red sea is because of algae that is called blue green algae blue green algae okay so there is a blue green algae called trichodesmium so this is a presence of this particular algae gives a red color to the red sea so answer is option c algae in fact it is called a blue green algae right okay next question famous scientist carolus linnaeus is associated with one of the following so plant classification binomial nomenclature identification of plants identification of animals so here the carolus linnaeus so in the previous question also i have explained this about the great work done by the carolus linnaeus so he is the man behind the introduction of the binomial system of nomenclature binomial system of nomenclature so this binomial system of nomenclature okay has explained in a book called systema naturae so this systema naturae published by linnaeus has come in 12 editions okay so 12 editions lo release a book ni or 12 editions lo 10th edition which was released in the year 1758 17 the 10th edition of system and nature released in the year 1758 in that publish uh, in that uh, edition he has completely explained about uh, the binomial system of nomenclature according to that uh, every organism is going to be named with uh, two words uh, first one genus uh, another one is uh, species okay then here while you are selecting this genus and species names also you must be very very cautious that that all those words must derive from latin words okay so either latin or latin related words we have to select in order to uh, name one organism right so that is a latin language very important then sometimes sometimes the genus name and species name okay the genus name and species name so both may be same if both words are same then it is called catonymy it is called what catonymy if the genus and species names both are same it is called catonymy for the best examples ratus ratus the scientific name of the rat okay then nasa nasa 
So NASA, NASA, the scientific name of the cobra, right? Not king cobra. That is failure. Uh, um, what is that called? King cobra is different. Okay. So Ophiopagus hanna. That is the scientific name. But cobra is NASA, NASA, right? Then axis, axis, the state animal of Telangana. Axis, axis, right? Bufo, bufo, the scientific name of frog. Bubo, bubo, the scientific name of owl. So, like this. Uh, so, two uh, words, genus and species name are same. Then it is called a tatonym. So, very, very important uh, which to be remembered. Okay, tatonym. Clear? So, this is a uh, re explanation regarding this particular question. So, option B, binomial nomenclature. Okay. So, this uh, plant classification, identification of plants, identification of animals, whether it is a plant or an animal or any organism, it has to be identified, it has to be classified, it has to be named in the separate branch of biology that is called a taxonomy. So, what is it called? Taxonomy. Taxonomy means ranks are the divisions. Nomi means naming. Okay. Right. So, father of taxonomy is also Carolus Linnaeus. Next one. Which one of the following is the fastest growing plant in the world? Okay. So, if you take these options. Populus, Tremilidis, Armillaria, Ocytis, Macrocystis, Pinifera, then Macro, Macro panastia rhinoceros. So, this macro panastia rhinoceros is a, a cockroach found in Australia. Cockroach found in uh, Australia. Okay. Then, when we come to this uh, populus uh, tremuladis, uh, it is the tree. Okay. In fact, uh, it is the largest tree. So, the largest tree is uh, Papillus. Then, Armillaria ostoe. So, this uh, Armillaria ostoe is nothing but uh, important uh, organism that is uh, related to the particular, uh, okay, it is called kelp. That means a group of uh, a seaweed. So, it is a seaweed. But, answer for the question is uh, macrocystis. So, this is also a seaweed, okay, the brown algae, the brown algae, so the brown algae are called seaweeds or kelps, so in that the macrocystis pyrifera, you know, it grows two feet per day, so one day, one day alone, two feet grow out of the length, so that's why the fastest growing plant on the earth planet is nothing but are in the world is a macrocystis pyrifera right next one and uh, one more key point also remember this uh, related to the kelps so the brown algae are called uh, kelps now these kelps are the best sources of uh, iodine and it can be used for the production of biogas right next question which one of the following is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom? So, it's a simple question. So, Arthropoda almost includes uh, nearly uh, mm, 1 million uh, types of organisms, uh, 1 million species. Uh, so, this particular Arthropoda becomes the largest phylum in the animal kingdom in that uh, one class insecta. It is the largest class Okay, so 80% of the animals belongs to the phylum Arthropoda. Remaining 20% comes under the remaining phyla as well as the chordates. Okay, and if we come to here, the chordates includes the chordates includes nearly uh, around uh, we can take the 60,000 species. Okay, and when we come to Anilida, it may cover around 2,000 species. And if we come to the Protozoa, almost to Two to okay, three thousand species are covered in this uh, protozoa. So the biggest phylum Arthropoda. Remember, Arthro means uh, jointed, pod means uh, legs. So jointed legs are present in Arthropoda. In that uh, highest animals are insects. Okay, then second largest phylum is called uh, Mollusca. 
second largest pile up nothing but uh, mollusca okay right so option b is the right answer next question which of the following is cold blooded animal so fish frog lizard all of the above first of all what is meant by cold blood cold blood means uh, the animals which cannot maintain which cannot uh, maintain constant body temperature constant uh, body temperature if uh, the animals are unable to maintain the constant body temperature we can call them as uh, cold blooded animals or poikilotherms cold blooded animals or poikilotherms if they can maintain the body temperature constant uh, those are called homeotherms homeotherms which are also called the warm blooded animals warm blooded animals right so here the warm blooded animals include so the homeotherms so the cold blooded animals include so poikilotherms right so now under poikilotherms we have got pisces means fishes amphibians amphibians then reptiles so amphibian pisces means all fishes amphibians frog these reptiles snake lizard dinosaur okay all these come under the um, uh, reptiles so here fish belongs to the pisces frog belongs to the phylum amphibia class amphibians lizard belongs to reptile so here all these three come under the cold blooded animals whereas the warm blooded homeotherms are nothing but birds and mammals birds and mammals so birds and mammals come under a category called homeotherms or warm blooded animals right so this is a the important explanation related to this and answer is option d 14th question which one of among the following is not a living fossil which one among the following is not a living fossil elephant shrew zinco stromatolite diplodocus so here the key term for you to understand the question is uh, living fossil so what is meant by fossil and what is meant by living fossil these two words must be clear to us a fossil is nothing but a remnant preserved by the nature okay whatever the remnants means the organism that lived in the past the organisms that lived in the past so the memories of those organisms either in the form of footprints hair nails bones okay then the excretory components so like this uh, different uh, substances or materials will be stored in the nature as a uh, remnant so the remnants preserved by the nature of those organisms uh, that lived in the past is nothing but uh, fossils then what are living fossils if any organisms number has come to single digit means uh, very soon those organisms are going to be extinct from the earth planet we can call them as living fossil okay so that is the difference between a fossil and a living fossil fossil is already extinct living fossil soon they are going to extinct right now when we come to the options here elephant shrew which is commonly found in australia okay it's a insectivorous animal so it eats a insects okay it has got a snout also so this particular elephant shrew number is uh, has come down okay very soon they are going to extinct but there are species are there but when we come to zinco this is belongs to the pteridophyta so this is a plant so their number also has come down okay and only one species are there in that particular one next to stromatolite this stromatolite is nothing but the rocks in fact these are the oldest rocks oldest rocks 
produced by cyanobacteria. We know that cyanobacteria is the earliest living form, earliest living form. And with the help of cyanobacteria, rock only, the scientists are able to find out uh, the characteristic features uh, of uh, uh, earth at the time of uh, origin of life okay so what type of conditions were there at the time of origin of life all these are studied with the help of uh, the oldest rocks produced by the cyanobacteria which is the earliest living form and those rocks are said to be stromatolites okay right then when we come to the diplodocus this uh, diplodocus is the okay longest longest dinosaur so the longest dinosaur is nothing but the diplodocus and these dinosaurs are completely extinct that's why it cannot be considered as a living fossil it can be considered as what a fossil why because that is completely extinct okay so almost its length will be 26 meters it is the longest dinosaur that lived on the earth. Okay. So, remember a dinosaur means a terrible lizard. So, that belongs to the class of reptiles. So, answer is option B, Diplodocus. Right. So, remaining all are living fossils. Their number is very low. Next one, snakes receive sound vibrations by. So, here in the snake, external ear is not there. But internal ear is developed like us okay so and in the middle ear also three bones are there malus incus stepis okay so this stepis is completely developed into another bone called columella so this columella bone okay the columella bone is present in in the place of stepis in snakes this columella has got attached to the jaw bones. Okay. So, in such a way, it can recognize the changes that happened. Okay. With the help of uh, the body. Right. So, external ears are completely absent. And middle ear has got a bone called columella, which is attached to the jaw bones. So, because of this particular arrangement, it is unable to sense the sounds with the help of ear instead of that it takes uh, through body okay that is one second important point related to the snakes only the snakes generally the tongue is used to identify the taste of the food okay but here the tongue of the snake will help that snake to identify what is happening around that particular environment okay so yen jarugutundo telusukodaniki tongue use avutadi right so that's what uh, Another important point. So, option B is the right answer. Next one. Which one of one of the following characteristics is common among parrot, platypus and kangaroo? So, when we come to the parrot, platypus and kangaroo. So, when we take this parrot, it lays eggs. Platypus also lays eggs. But kangaroo is not laying eggs. It gives birth to immature young ones so that's why not at all oviparity means that only laying eggs so that cannot be considered okay then when we come to the second option toothless jaws toothless jaws so um, toothless jaws here all the animals contains jaws which have got tooth especially when we come to the platypus and kangaroo there are teeth are present but in parrot not much developed but is there okay so here beak is very much developed then functional post anal tail so the post anal tail is functional not in the platypus okay so whereas in the parrot and kangaroo we can have the development of tail okay and especially if you come to the parrot the tail only particularly not present not seen clearly okay so the feather is developed in such a way okay then here but what is the common character among the options if you take all these three belongs to the homeothermic means homeotherms 
so homeotherms are called what warm blooded animals okay uh, either bird or kangaroo and platypus kangaroo and platypus both belongs to mammals class okay mammals they give birth to young ones so and here kangaroo gives birth to immature young ones so and they give milk to their young ones okay but here platypus first lay the eggs and these eggs are developed into the young ones so then after that it will give milk so that's why it is a parrot to platypus kangaroo both are homeotherms they can maintain the body temperature constant okay option c is the right answer next one which one of among the following groups of animals maintains constant body temperature in changing environmental conditions okay so which can maintain their body temperature means cannot maintain fishes amphibians reptiles whereas birds can maintain the body temperature constant because they are homeotherms next question which one of the following is the correct sequence of levels of hierarchy of classification of organisms from higher to lower from higher to lower what is the order so i already mentioned in the previous bits about the taxonomy so what is meant by taxonomy dividing the organisms into groups called taxa nomi means naming okay so here in this taxonomy seven taxa will be there so once again here what is meant by a taxa means grouping the organisms okay or dividing the organisms according to their similarities into groups those groups are said to be taxa like that the highest taxa is called kingdom okay the least taxa is called species right between the kingdom so kingdom after that we have got to phylum the second taxa then phylum the class after class order after order the family after family the genus after genus the species so kingdom first phylum second class 3 order 4 and family 5 genus 6 species 7 right like that seven taxa are there okay so this is the order now according to that you can take so phylum class order family genus okay phylum class family so board phylum class family so here reversed so that's why b is wrong family order so first family will not come at all okay then class family order species but here reversed genus first should come first then here phylum class order family genus so option a is the right answer for this correct hierarchical order okay next question consider the following statements heart is the three chambered in fishes heart is four chambered in birds all animals of class amphibia are characterized by two pairs of limbs in all reptiles respiration is by lungs only okay which of the above statements are correct so regarding this particular question if you come okay heart is three chambered in fish no in fish two chambered heart is there okay so like this one atrium and one ventricle a two chambered heart is present and if you come to the second statement heart is four chambered in birds so in birds four chambers yes two atria and two ventricles right atrium left atrium right ventricle left ventricle okay right so this is a statement is correct but this is wrong then if you come to the third all animals of class amphibia are characterized by two pairs of limbs two pairs of limbs means total uh, four two pairs of limbs but remember here there are certain animals that belongs to the amphibia limbs are completely absent so that's why this particular statement is also wrong if you take frog okay four uh, the four limbs that is two four limbs two hind limbs you can take but there are certain if you take uh, this uh, salamander it does not have uh, legs only that is a uh, uh, limbs only not present next if we come to the fourth statement in all reptiles respiration is by lungs only yes in all reptiles that is lizard okay snake in all those uh, 
respiration occurs through lungs if respiration occurs through lungs it is called pulmonary respiration if respiration occurs through skin it is called cutaneous right if respiration occurs through gills bronchial if respiration occurs through trachea it is called a tracheal respiration which is found in insects okay gill respiration in fish cutaneous frog earthworm pulmonary so amphibians reptiles birds mammals all these things so so here fourth statement is correct second so second and four means option c is the right answer next question so the match the following so here match list 1 with list 2 and select the correct answers by using the codes given below list 1 cycas list 2 1 cycas jamia pygmia sequentia gigantia abyss balsemia so here when we take uh, this particular option so here we can consider this option as uh, one of the related uh, question related question for the smallest to biggest to like that the gymnosperms as well as uh, the plants okay so that's why if you take uh, this particular one we need to take the option which is easier to be remembered okay sequia if you take uh, this is sequia is the sequia is the tallest gymnosperm in fact it is the tallest tree right so that's why we need to consider sequia is nothing but the tallest gymnosperm okay tallest gymnosperm clear then so c3 so with c3 if you take not there anywhere only option a is given so no doubt this is the correct answer now cycus cycus is a living fossil okay Jamia pygmaea is a small gymnosperm and abyss balsamia is a canada balsam plant okay so that's why option a is the right answer for this particular question so whenever a question is given like that so remember always which one sequia very very important bit to remember it is the tallest plant in the world okay uh, belongs to the class gymnosperms okay right next one consider the following statements bryophytes are the amphibians of plant kingdom bryophytes do not have vascular tissue selaginella is an example of bryophyte which of the statements given above is are correct so here when we take uh, the bryophytes are the amphibians of the plant kingdom no doubt the statement is correct so they can live in both uh, soil as well as that is land as well as in the water then bryophytes do not have vascular tissue yes first two vascular tissues are seen in the pteridophyta okay then when we come to the selaginella is an example for is an example for bryophyta no selaginella is a pteridophyte okay so option b one and two only the right statements okay next match the list one with list two and select the correct answers by using the codes given below so respiratory root respiratory root okay then fasciculated root climbing root epiphytic root so these are all root modifications root modifications okay in order to perform certain additional functions the plant parts gets modified so here the root modifications we have got now when we come to the answer here definitely the respiratory roots are present in rhizophora then fasciculated roots are found in piper bill okay next to climbing roots are found in sorry here so the fasciculated roots are found in dahlia climbing roots are found in piper beetle okay tamal pakantam chodandi adi next to epiphytic roots are present in orchids so here respiratory roots a4 fasciculated roots 3 then climbing roots piper beetle 2 
and epiphytic root 1 orchids. So, 4, 3, 2, 1 is the right answer. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 3, 2, 2 3, 4, right? Option C, 4, 3, 2, 1 is the right answer for this question. Match list 1 with list 2 and select the correct answers by using the codes given below. List 1 family, Solanaceae, Malvaceae, Liliaceae, Crucifere. Example, list 2, Radish, Onion, Cotton, Potato. So, here when we come to the particular question, so now we can see the four options clearly, right? Now, here if you take the Solanaceae belongs to, the Solanaceae belongs to uh, family, that is uh, Potato belongs to Solanaceae. So, A4 is the right answer, okay? Then, here if you take the options, so you could not find anywhere A4, only option A is there, okay? So, definitely that is going to be the answer, anyway we will ch check. So, Malvesi, if you take uh, this Malvesi, okay, here the cotton plants belongs to Malvesi and Liliesi, if you take uh, the Liliesi is nothing but uh, the onion. Okay, and crucifere nothing but radish, right? So, solanesi potato, malvesi cotton, liliesi onion, crucifere radish, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, option A is the right answer. Okay, next question. Match list 1 with list 2 of class phylum animals and select the correct answer from the course given below. Octopus. Jellyfish, silverfish, Bombay duck. Okay. So, when we come to this particular option, so, so here the octopus belongs to mollusca. It is called devil fish. It is not a fish, but it is called devil fish. Okay. Then jellyfish. This jellyfish belongs to Silentareta. It is called Aurelia, but it is commonly called jellyfish. The silverfish. Lepisma, it is an insect, but it is called fish, belongs to Arthropoda. Okay. Then Bombay duck is a fish, belongs to the class Pisces. So here octopus 3, jellyfish 4, silverfish 2, and 1. 4, 3, 4, 2, 1. So 3, 3 is not there here. So that's why here only there. But 3, 4, 2, 1. So option A is the correct answer for this question. Next one, match list 1 with list 2 and select the correct answer from the codes given below. Man, cat, cow, dog. Okay. So, here the scientific names are given. So, man, you know, homo sapiens. The cow, boss indicus. Okay. Boss indicus. Then, when we take uh, the cat, the cat is nothing but... Uh, this is uh, uh, Felis Domestica. Felis Domestica. And Canis Familiaris. Canis Familiaris or Cam Canis Lopus is the scientific name of the dog. So that's why option A once again. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4 is the right answer. So that's all about this particular handout session. So I wish you all the best. Thank you for watching.